Hey friends, welcome to the first official episode of The Supernatural Explorer. If you're into the paranormal and you listen to podcasts, then you may be aware that Tim of Strange Familiars Podcast, together with James and friends, are involved in an ongoing investigation on the private land known as Site 7 in York County, Pennsylvania, where there have been a wide variety of supernatural occurrences. If you'd like more background and stories on Site 7, be sure to check out Strange Familiars episodes 19 and 20. In this episode, I do my very first distance visit to Site 7 to see what spirits and energies I encounter. Let's get to it. Hey, welcome everyone to the official first episode of the Supernatural Explorer. My name is Kurt Becker and I am the Supernatural Explorer. <laughs> hmm. That almost sounds like I'm announcing a show and I just want to be real. 100% real. That's the point of the show. The short of it is, if you haven't listened to the test pilot or the pilot, go check them out, catch up to speed. I'm a Reiki master of 18 years, and like in the last three years, I've been given the gift of being able to connect with things from a distance. And now I'm going to start using that to try and explore the supernatural and learn more about it in cooperation with everybody out there who's been doing it way longer than me and knows way more than me. So I want to take hopefully what's my piece of the puzzle, add it to the puzzle, and we'll get a clearer picture of what's going on. So that's where I'm at. Special thanks, shout out to one of the people who helped to get me where I am right now and what I'm doing right now and coming out publicly with what I do and helping to educate me on all things paranormal when I was starting out. And that would be Dylan over at Paranormal Thoughts Podcast in Australia. Love his podcast. It was my first one that introduced me to all things paranormal and it got me excited about everything. So go check his podcast out. Thank you, Dylan. After that, my friend Neely led me to Tim's podcast, Strange Familiars. And then coincidentally, I find out I live about 30 minutes from Tim. So if you follow Strange Familiars at all, you know Tim often visits Site 7. I've never heard of Site 7 before the show. I'm an introvert homebody. I don't get out a lot. I've only lived in Pennsylvania for 13 years. I don't know a lot of things. (laughs) I don't know, you know, I know basic stuff, but I don't know paranormal stuff, especially I'm I'm three years new to it. So I've never tried to figure out where Site 7 is or anything like that. So the short of it is I connected with Tim and he knows I'm going to distance connect distance feel because i as i said in pilot test pilot i don't really see anything i don't really hear anything i feel stuff as if i'm one with what i'm feeling and then it's very easy for me to feel what that energy is saying downloads coming to my head so that's what i'm gonna do Ooh, before i get into this because this is a i think a gem so i talked about the sign that led me to reaching out to Tim, finally, and Sasquatch related. So I talked about that. Now, I just recorded the pilot, and I knew I was doing episode one, and I was super amped up, because all this is happening rapidly now. For me, I'm having the experience of everything suddenly like gelling and coming together, happening very rapidly. So when I sat down to do episode one, and I was on my break, and I was going to recenter, I didn't realize I'm like how excited I was until I went to recenter, and then I realized how excited I was. I'm having a little trouble reeling myself in because of the excitement. I, you know, probably, you know, felt good to feel the excitement of the show. But I knew I was going to go in and be checking in on site seven, and that requires me to get into a certain state. So I'm laying there, and I'm just going to go there. If we're going to do this, I'm doing this 100. percent You're going to get 100 percent real me, and you'll have to. I hopefully learn about me as we go along. I'm laying there. I have at least three years experience connecting with whatever you want to call them. Angels, archangels, spirits, higher, divine, 
you want to call it nature, you want to just call it the, the higher self of your psyche, whatever you want to call it. I have three years of experience connecting with things that are greater than me. And if I know what my energy feels like, then when I connect with these things, uh, these things, that's so rude. <laughs> that's so rude. I just said that because I'm trying to be universal in what I'm saying. I'm just going to call them what I call them. The, these spirits, these lovely, lovely spirits, these lovely, lovely entities, I can feel when they're working with me. And all it takes for them to work with you is you get yourself out of the way enough and to believe in whatever you believe in enough to let it happen. So I'm laying there. I have my own connection with Mary, like Tim. I just heard that he was brought up Catholic. I was brought up Roman Catholic. So, And I heard him talking about his relationship with Mary in one of the episodes. It almost sounds like me, like he's not so much religious, more just open, but that Mary undeniably was like knocking on his door, like saying, hey, I'm here for you. I think he said something about that in other episodes. If I'm getting wrong, I'll correct myself. But I think that that was the gist of what I got out of it. And what's funny is I have a Mary experience. I went to church, and then as soon as I was old enough, like college days, I stopped going to church. I didn't really care for it. But now that I'm older, I look back and I totally appreciate that I was introduced to all of that because I still have belief for all that and belief for every other divine and wonderful thing out there as well. And uh, science that makes sense too and just truth, reason and all that. I'm open to everything that sounds reasonable. And so first time ever I thought to try and connect with Mary. And I, was, I remember thinking like, you know, I, I always maybe prayed to God in general, to Jesus or just, you know, universe, whatever. But I don't think I ever specifically looked to Mary. And I was trying to feel things more. Again, this point in my life, I don't have any distant skills. I just can feel the energy around me. And if I'm around people, I can feel their energy. So I'm laying there and I'm like, uh, Jesus seems to be hanging back on me. I have no doubt he's with me. He seems to be hanging back on me. And look, I'm not trying to convert anybody to anything. You believe what you want to believe. You want to believe science. I respect everyone's belief. I'm just telling my personal experience here. So I said, like, all right, Mary, I'm, you know, talk to you directly. I, you know, I want to connect with you. And, da -da. and it, immediately I felt like I felt something. And I was like, wow. I'm like, whoa. Like, I even said it to her, like, thank you. I think I feel you. And so I was very impressed. And again, you could say, oh, there's all in your head, you do, whatever. Coincidences and signs always tell me a greater tale than whatever I could think in my, of in my head. So in my head, I'm thinking, wow, I connected with Mary. That was great. And a week later, we go to our uncle's and Ray is really into the bracelets at this point. The religious bracelets, they just come out. They're like wood pegs with string through them kind of things and then they came out with even nicer ones and the say there's like 12 wood pieces around it and they have Jesus and saints and angels and Padre Pio another one of my faves I could do a whole show on him so and he's got one on Johnny's got one on and they give one to my wife Jen and they're like do you want one too and all of them have all these you know saints and doing all different things on it and Ray's like yeah I'll get you one and He's like, ah, I, I don't have any more except this one. And he gives it to me, and it's all Mary. <laughs> Everyone else had the bracelets with all the other angel saints, Jesus on it. He goes, ah, oh, all I have is this one. Yet, yeah. And he says that because he knows I really like the other ones. And it was all Mary, and it was the only one he had left. I'm like, come on. Seven days out from my experience and that happens. You can't write this stuff. You can't make this stuff up. And I know our know, brains like to solve puzzles, but to me, some things are just blatant. So anyway, I'm laying here thinking, oh, like, oh, I'm so excited about the show. And all right, you got to calm down. But I'm having a little trouble calming myself down because I'm enjoying being excited. And all of a sudden, I think of Mary. Mary, she just pops right in my head. And instantly, I feel her totally chill me out. Because I know to yield, to pay attention, to bow down to my elders, my older, wiser brothers and sisters, spirits, angels out there. Like, I, they know better. So when their energy comes in, I immediately yield. She came in, I let my crazy thoughts go, and she just totally balanced me. And then my thought came into my head, and with the thought came this brightness. My eyes got brighter. She connected Tim and I. 
she connected to the nine. So, which is so wonderful because this is all about this show, we connected Tim and I with Sasquatch, and this shows about supernatural things. So that for me is my personal tie-in between the spiritual and the supernatural. It's like to me they're one and the same. We're all on the same ride that's created by creation, whatever you want to call it, whether you want to call it science creation or God creation. We're all on the same ride uh, science and or spirituality and or the paranormal speaks to multi dimensions multi planes of existence and i think we're all on this ride connected whether we could see it or not together all trying to make things better i think that's the point of it all so mary coming through to me while i'm trying to chill out and connect to do a show that i feel like signs led me to tim and then it involves sasquatch and Mary in the same sentence? That in itself is, uh, I love this episode already. I'm very happy with where this is headed. And I do try and just organic as it goes down, letting it play out. And I guess I'm more of a reporter than anything else. So, finished my meditations. Now I'm sitting here. Now I'm about to go into Site 7 for the first time. I did go to the edge of Site 7 once from a distance. I can tell from signs and coincidences where my life's heading usually weeks in advance. You can see, I'm not saying I could tell the future, but look, this isn't a hard puzzle. We're creatures of habit. If there's certain things that are in line in life, we can know where we're headed in a week or two or a month. This isn't science fiction or telling the future. I knew I was going to be sitting here doing this and I'm sitting here doing this. So... And I knew what I wanted the show to be. I wanted it to be a real reality show, meaning I, there's nothing scripted. I'm sitting. I'm going to go into my zone. I'm going to open myself to everyone and tell you what exactly what I'm experiencing. That's live, unscripted stuff. So I didn't want to go into Site 7 before I was sitting here, but I went to the edge of Site 7 once from a distance. And what I felt was definitely exciting. Like I just felt I could feel... There was an energy there, and I can feel it was a different energy than I was used to. And, and you could say, well, how would you know it's a different energy than you're used to? Well, let's put it this way. I remember the first time I distance Reiki, my dog, Bernie, because once I found that connect from a distance, the difference between that and doing Reiki in person is when I'm doing Reiki with someone in person, I tend to have my hands out and be using my hands, and I'm connecting with their energy. So it's like, my hands and the energy from my hands is connecting with their energy. That's where it's happening. When I connect with someone from a distance, there's a merging of energies where I can feel like I'm them, like I can feel what they're feeling. It's emergence. Now, do I think I'm traveling through space and time and merging? No, it's like tuning into a radio, but feelings, it's the same thing. Instead of noise coming through, feelings are coming through. So I'm not there. We're all connected and I'm being tuned into that. I got him not there. I like really being in the comfort of my home. What's re- going to be really fun is if I go out into the fields with Tim and all his peeps because I'm not a woodsy guy. I don't, again, I, my, my piece of the puzzle is very specific, but I think the only way to have fun and to learn is to go out of my comfort zone. So I'll be out in the woods doing stuff. People who know me know I even have formerly had a aversion to exercise, but my wife and I have been walking more, so I think I've been training for this subconsciously. Anyway, the first time I distance Reiki, my dog Bernie, I'd been distance Reiki to people probably for a year at that point. He's my dog, I know him, but when I connected with his energy, with my energy, it's a dog, it's not a human. It took, I felt like it took three, four, five times It's like learning a language that's like your language. I imagine maybe Spanish and Portuguese have overlaps. So it's like if you didn't know Portuguese, but you were Spanish, after like a week, you could start to understand it more. I I liken it like that. I connected with an energy. I knew it was energy, but I couldn't, it wasn't making sense to me. What did it mean? Maybe I felt something somewhere, but where was I feeling it? I think of humans as upright, dogs as sideways. Like it was a whole learning curve. And so... Site 7, I felt energies, and they felt interesting and, and exciting, but I didn't know what they were or what they were saying, but that I felt energy standing on the edge, psychically, of Site 7. <laughs> I can't wait to go in. So this is what I did. I made up a map of Site 7 with nine areas. North is one. 
north east is two east is three all around eight those eight parts and then the center i made nine so this is how i'm going to do because all i can do is say connect me to and feel stuff that's like my whole shtick so i got to work within that it's almost like doing playing a game where you can only ask yes and no so all i could say is what i'm going to start with i'll tell you i'm going to say connect me with the strongest energy in there I'll try to do the best I can to explain how I know what I'm feeling. It's weird. I just, I feel it and I know it. So I'll tell you what I'm feeling. And I'll tell you if I think it's a, a spirit entity or if I'm feeling a piece of property. Because I have felt vortexes before. Doors, openings. So I, the definitive difference between that. And you know what the difference is? They're very static. You know, a door is a door. It doesn't turn into anything else. But it, a spirit is ever changing with what it's doing. It can be, it can be happy one minute, and upset the next minute. It, it's, it, there's a fluidity to it. Yeah, I just figured out myself how I know the difference between animate and so-called inanimate objects. <laughs> so that's good. Anyway, let's go into site seven already. Let's go in. So I'll go into my state. There'll be a pause. But uh, step one: connect me with the strongest thing that either lives or frequency has to be frequency can't just be been there once i want the strongest thing that lives and or often frequents site seven that's what i'm asking to be connected to let's see what happens wish me luck all right game on here we go i really am very pleased and happy that the energy is very balanced very and very palatable and strong i like it ah oh, this is good i i mean i felt a lot of things over the last three years and things can go from wispy to where i almost don't feel them till where i feel an energy in the room grabbing me and by the shoulders and shaking me energy is that strong sometimes and I, if you or anyone who's heard stories or know anyone who has things flying off the shelves or stuff moving or disappearing you know there's more that can go on than most people maybe think so very strong calm and i felt like i was i was being scanned as well i felt like I felt it for maybe a second too before it then turned and felt me. <laughs> I don't explain that. It's I gonna we'll learn together because I've never fully examined. Like, all right, Kurt, you're saying these things. How can you say how you're knowing these things? I just know. So I'm gonna go back in. By the way, this is how I think it happens. Like, I yes, they're making the connection for me, but I think there's an intermediary. I feel like the number of spirits and stuff that i work with is infinite because i just i try to connect with everything that is good and everything that is for good so whoever's on that team i try to be on that team how many spirits are on that team and then when i connect with something the theory the thought behind it is, is they're going to send in whatever's on the team that connects best with whatever i'm trying to connect with i in my, i believe can i say that that's how it works no can i say anything factually about what i'm talking about no I can only tell my personal experience. So something is connecting and I'm, I'm like watching, getting to listen in. Yeah, I know I feel it and they feel me, but it, it's not disruptive for me to jump out and jump back in is what I'm saying, in case anybody was wondering even that. So the liaison, the um, ambassador, whoever's connecting with whatever's in there, and I want to call it a Sasquatch. I find myself doing that. As I was talking, I keep thinking of it as Sasquatch, find it. And it's not like I have no experience with Sasquatch. I'm not definitively calling it a Sasquatch, but it definitely has the power. Let's, I'll use my room. I have a meditation room. I'm going to say it's eight by eight. I'll reference how, I, how much energies feel like they fill my room versus are smaller. So this thing, I felt things that have filled my room. And this thing is pretty much almost filling my room with energy. Most people, I feel, fill my body with energy because most people think of themselves as inside their body so it's no surprise that when i feel people i feel them kind of just inside my body some people i feel greater and then i know they they're tapped into more i know tim if you listen 
I can't remember where he mentioned this, uh, something maybe with the cemetery in Columbia, putting the pieces together. I think there was a guy there who was a Reiki guy, too, giving Reiki something with an acorn. Put, yeah, I know. If you listen to <laughs> Strange Familiars, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, Tim was thinking Sasquatch spirit and projected his spirit out to the size of a Sasquatch. I believe that 100%. People have more potential in their spirits than they realize. And people are sensitive if you're going like, big as a Sasquatch. Yeah, that's something. So, now let me go back in. Yeah, this, I got to tell you, for not being a woodsy outdoor person, for this spirit being there and being the strongest thing inside seven, ah. Oh, I get chills, chills in a good way of peace. If this guy's the alpha, sorry, this guy or girl spirit. Well, I'm tending, I know Mary and I know other female spirits, so I am tending towards male energy. I know feminine energy, but let's go back. Let's go back. Mm, just wonderful, wonderful. Now, for those of you who have had Sasquatch experiences and maybe listening to it and thinking like, why do I keep calling it a Sasquatch? I'm calling myself out. I just called it a Sasquatch again, again, because it, it, the, the size of the energy feels like the size and strength of the Sasquatch energy I felt. Hmm. And I don't get answers to things. I, I can't say, is it flannel man? And then, uh, something pulls on my right ear for yes and my left ear for no. I don't get that. That's not, I've tried yes, no things before. I think we're all given specific things because then we're supposed to all take our specific things like little keys or pieces to the puzzle and bring them all together. And then the prize we get for figuring out that that's the way we're supposed to live our life is we get to see the big picture. So I'm only given... <laughs> You get to feel this and talk about this, and sometimes we'll show you how we influence it. But that's it. That's all That's all you're getting for now. So, great. Now, I, I think I know this. I'm going to call it a guy because it does feel more masculine to me. It just does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick top three strongest things. I love that number one. Love number one so far. Very happy with number one. So I'm going to pick number two and number three. And then I'm going to go through the quadrants and see if I can find out where they are. So I know what number one feels like. So when I'm going around and saying, let me feel, I shouldn't call them quadrants, there's nine of them. What's the quadrant word for nine? <laughs> so I'm going to go area number one. Ah, it's, you know, it's called site seven. So I'll call area one, area two, area three. And then, uh, and then I'll see what I feel. And then I call area three, say, and then I also, and then I feel my new friend there. Then I know he kind of, at least right now, because I only read the moment. I don't read the future or the past. I just read the moment. I don't know. Oh, he's chilling in site three. And then I'll come back another day. And if they're in the same place, then I know that's where they chill. And then Tim could tell me, wow, that's pretty cool. Or, wow, you got some fantastic imagination. <laughs> we'll find out. I don't know how we are on time. I have another show, a podcast that I totally just do for fun. I mean, this is for fun too, but this is more, I feel like, work and serious. I have a, I feel like I have a purpose here. So I'm going to have fun, but I, this one feels, this is like life's purpose kind of thing. My other podcast called Now That's Nonsense, that's just for fun. That's totally just for fun. So I brought that up because the consensus on the fun one seems a half an hour, 40 minutes may be a little too long, 25. There, there seems to be like that kind of range. But I love the really long podcasts. I was listening to um, those conspiracy guys and they had those five, six hour marathons. I love those because I love hour long car rides and I'll just pick up where I left off. And Tim's, I feel like I've been hovering on the ones I've been listening to, hour and a half, two hours ish. Love that format. So, you know, if this goes on, the other podcast version of me is getting uncomfortable with how long this is going on. The person in me that really likes the longer podcast is like, hey, this is, you're going to cover, you came here to do Site 7. You had a, a thing in mind. You're going to go through your process. And how long it takes is how long it takes. So 
let's go in and find out about uh, number two. So number one, prematurely calling it male Sasquatch, peaceful, good, good soul, good vibe. Wow. Okay. Number two feels confused. <laughs> I'm getting confusion because, and I say confusion because I feel my energy is not sitting still. It's kind of flowing out of me and into me at the same time, which uh, I'll, I'll describe what help, healthy energy feels like. feels easy like Sunday morning. <laughs> it feels like a cool, gentle breeze. Now, I feel... If this feels like currents of energy, like uh, not a small stream or brook, but a river where if you stand in it, you're going to feel the force of the river against you. And if you're on a slippery rock, it may even push you a little bit. You know, it's not going to, you're not going to get swept away down the river, but there's some current to the river. I feel the energy like that both coming out of me and into me at the same time. So that's why I said it feels like a confused spirit. The size of the energy, I feel this energy mostly inside of me. The in and out action is, is causing some kind of uh, energy in front of me as well. But it, it, if this thing is having an off day, and if number two comes across number one, number one's aura of energy could probably totally chill out number two. So, But number two for people, <laughs> if you're not a Sasquatch, yeah, I feel like this entity on an off day, if it gets out of balance, could cause some mischief. But on a good day, it could cause some good. And it's only because this energy is within himself kind of going both ways. And how do I explain this? I think the in and out is caused by the... <laughs> I just got to say, I just got to say what comes to me, the interdimensionality of it. It's kind of half here, half there. Why would, does something want to be half anywhere? No, I think, I, I think however it works in the planes of existence, the seen and the unseen, I think for a period, you can call it a life or whatever, or a, it may be some parts of the planes are like classes and after you graduate, you go get to go to a different plane. But I feel like you're in one place or you're not, mostly. Ghosts appear, so sometimes things appear from other planes. Sasquatches seem to appear from other planes. UFOs seem to appear from other planes. And maybe we appear in other people's planes sometimes when we're being greater than we think, when we're sending out prayers and trying to connect with something larger than ourselves. Then maybe we appear in other places. Who knows? Who knows? But this thing, it does not feel comfortable. I didn't feel comfortable half in, half out. So... I know the difference between number one and number two is night and day. You cannot confuse these two spirits at all. I'm going to call everything a spirit unless it feels like an inanimate object, like a, a vortex. Otherwise, everything is getting a, a soul and a spirit for me. Okay. Number three. The number three most powerful sight seven. Ah, this is nice. This is a... Uh... I don't, this is the word that came to my head, but I can't say it didn't come off of what I was feeling. And I got some lightness. I'm sitting in a, I'll call it a 90% dark room because I can still see the outlines of objects and things. And with my eyes closed, I could see a ball of light in my chest. Will of the wisp, is that how you say it? An orb. So it seems like the most powerful thing there is a, call it Sasquatch like. There we go. Sasquatch like entity. The second most powerful thing is, uh, I don't even know what to call it. What, what would I liken it to? What, what is an entity that appears as the size of us, maybe a little bit bigger? I imagine ETs fit that bill. I don't think ETs are the size of Sasquatches. ETs seem to be more our size, sometimes taller, sometimes shorter. So I'm going to put this in the ET category. I'm not saying it is an ET, ET like, because what else is our size, but could be between dimensions, uh, planes of existence. And the third thing feels like an orb, like a wispy spirit, uh, but nice. Number one was peaceful and calm and strong. Number two had a strong energy too, but this like the size of me energy and uh, confused. And number three was a size of like a, what's a little bit larger than a, 
basketball, like a medicine ball size, light in my chest and just peaceful and calm. But also I felt light, like, <laughs> and it was light. So that was cool. So two out of three ain't bad. Yeah, because if two out of three, the most powerful things are light and one's a little confused, I, I like those odds. If that's the first place I go exploring in real time with my physical body, <laughs> then I feel very good about that. Now, let's let's round it out here. Now, I'm going to go through the nine, the nine sectors, the nine sections of Site 7 as I laid out, with number one being north, and then northeast, east, and the center being nine. So, and I'll... I'll get a website. It'll be Blogspot to start. It'll be the supernaturalexplorer.blogspot.com. And I'll put the makeshift little picture of the sections of Site 7 up. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to say Section 1, Section 2. All right, here we go. Area 1. To me, I, f- it's not, I don't feel nothing. I feel light energy is like occasionally running by almost like the the size of like a chipmunk <laughs> like, that's what it feels every once in a while i feel like an energy zip by me i definitely don't feel spirit number one i don't feel spirit number two and number three i think i would see it because it got lighter too and i felt it in my my chest area so i don't feel any of the three of them i'll ha- hang here another 10 seconds or so yeah, there's there's mild activity in the northern in the northern sector, <laughs> but none of my friends yet, none of my new friends. All right, let's go to area two, section two, which is the northeast section. Hmm, this is interesting. I feel I feel uh, some energies moving through me smaller than the wisp. Number three, bigger than the chipmunks, and but it doesn't have the light of the wisp. So it has like the energy of the wisp-ish and is appearing in the same part of my body, but it doesn't have the light. So almost like a relative of the wisp, maybe wisps in training. So I'm wondering if area three will hold the wisps. These are the next door neighbors. They're learning from them. So it's interesting. I'm very fascinated. Uh, let's go to area three, section three, the east section. Hmm. This is interesting. This is a very quiet section. Very. I don't feel anything. Again, the tree tell will be when I go back one day. Because what in life is static? Yeah, trees are static. Yeah, sometimes things find their spot and that's their home they don't maybe deviate too far but i'll only know when i go back another day and recheck that'll be part two i have to revisit my three new friends and recheck all the areas after i do this but three feet i don't feel anything very just calm peaceful chill right now preliminarily if i was going to set up camp that's where i'd set it up (laughs) because it feels the least activity and then you could Go to the edges of the other areas. I don't know, but I, I, I'm not the woodsman or the or the or the physical explorer at this point. So I'll do what anyone else says. Who knows what they're doing? All right, area four, the um, southeast. Ah, I'm saying southeast, and I'm already feeling something. So let me go in and see what it is. I started feeling it already. Yeah. All right. This is a southeast spirit number two. Southeast spirit number two. That's final final answer? Yeah, final answer. Yeah, I might feel him, it. I don't know. Him, her, they. I might feel number two, spirit number two, somewhere else too. But right now, area four. You know what? This isn't... I just realized, like, I work with divine spirits to balance energies. That's pretty rude just to go on reporting. I'm going to go in and see if I can balance my friend here. And then I can truly call him my friend. And just to be clear, I don't do the balancing. All right, it's happening. I got to be quiet. Ah, that was nice. That was nice. Now, 
when uh, spirits, guides, my uh, my uh, my mentors, when they balance someone's energy, it usually happens anywhere from like seconds. The, the normal thing is 30, 30 seconds to a minute is pretty average, two minutes. But if something takes five, ten minutes to balance, because we're talking a realm and un, uh, a realm that's not physical, so it's it's like air. It should be able to flow theoretically like air. And so if something is held in a certain way, then you're the entity, the spirit, the whatever is physically holding it in some way, mentally holding it in some way. It's a belief in some way. And if they're not open to healing, open to a change occurring then they can hold on to that. And I love this spirit number two, and, and I'm looking forward to meeting spirit number two because the, the, the energy shifted and bounced within 30 seconds. And that's really, I'm very happy. I can't believe I just talked about number two before and didn't stop to talk help. Shame on me. So, but I forgive myself. I did the right thing this time. I would love to go to site seven. Ah, and you know, it's, I was talking here. I can talk and stay connected to things. Uh, that, that took some practice. It's uh, Think about driving your car, but uh, talking on the phone, and you're not even paying attention, and you wind up at your destination. A lot like that. After a lot of practice, you can do the work and talk. So in my talking and coming back and checking, it feels very solid. The energy still feels the same, very strong. Wow, but stronger energy than people. Um, I know what most people feel like. This is the size of people, the size of the energy. It's not as like spirit number one was where the energy filled my, almost filled my room. Uh, this one's still around the size of a person's energy, but three, fourfold in strength, solid. Wow. And when this thing's balanced, this thing, wow. I like that I'm feeling most of the energy in the heart. That's what you want to feel. You don't want to feel the energy in the head. You don't want to feel the energy crazy in the head. You want to feel a lot of heart. This one is... I know what I mean when I say this. I hope it doesn't come across wrong in any way. This one feels more human-like. Not to take anything away from Sasquatches. I think they are very human-like, but they're also very animal-like. This thing is more human-like in nature. Humanoid. (laughs) Like... In nature. Ah, yeah, this is great. This is great. So, area four for spirit number two. And I hope I get names or something. I feel bad calling them number one, number two, number three. But what am I going to do? All right. Let's say goodbye to my friend. Yeah. All right. That's great. I made a friend. All right. Let's go to area five, section five, the south. I don't feel things moving around. The energy of the land, very calming area, uh, a nice strong energy. Oh, a new campsite, the south, because this has an energy that would that isn't just nothing. It has an energy that would hold you. I wonder if there's a lot of rocks in this area. I have a theory on rocks. I believe trees can have spirits in them, and of course, the earth itself you know what a force gravity is alone so the earth has a force to it and it could be calming if you could tune into it because it's very steady of course but this area if i feel an energy like this i usually attribute it to rocks so if it's not maybe something's going on below the surface or maybe just collectively the trees the land and the rocks and any anything in this area collectively they hold this community and this communal space and I don't feel a lot of movement here. So if there are spirits, entities here, they're being respectful of the area. Oh, that's the, nature would do that, I imagine. Yeah, so that's good. So I'm not saying I feel something, in, but if there's something there, it's being respectful of the area. All right, area six. Yeah, it's late. I am getting all tired. Sorry. I hope it's still interesting, though. Keep it going. Keep it going. Here we go. Area 6, which is the southwest. Southwest. Hmm. Yeah, all right, all right. I'm getting a wisp. It feels bigger than the other wisp. So, uh, hold on. I think we have a character. Hold on. (laughs) I'll I'll tell you what I'm feeling. 
Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. You know, it's funny. I had to listen back. I said it feels like the wisp. It didn't quite have the light of the wisp, and it didn't quite have the shape of the wisp, but it came in like the wisp. And I wanted it to be the wisp. I'll be honest. I know the difference between what I feel and then what I wish. I wanted it to be the wisp. And so because it had the likeness of the wisp, I opened to it. I was like, oh, the the wisp, because I wanted it to be the wisp. And then once I opened it and connected with it, it quickly changed to something else. So I I haven't seen a lot. I haven't seen a Sasquatch. I've seen UFOs. I haven't seen a Sasquatch. I've seen a shadow person. But I haven't seen shapeshifters. Do I think they could be real? We live in an infinite uh, realm of creativity. I think anything's possible. This thing was definitely a shapeshifter spirit, without a doubt. So we got a, a mischievous one. So I didn't feel overwhelming sense of evil. It didn't try and take anything from me. It was more just like, gotcha. But in, a, <laughs> in that kind of way, with that voice sounding like that, like, gotcha. Like playful, but a little uh, rough around the edges playful. Yeah, and he did get me. So, yeah, I get a he. I get, I even get like a, a scruffy face. Not, not, I didn't see. In my, that's in my, like my mind's eye, so to speak. Well, I don't actually see a picture. All right. Mischief. A little mischief in the southwest. All right, let's go to the west, which is area seven. Yeah. Let's go to the west, area seven. Let me, I gotta, that, uh, and the spirit I was just talking about lingering and listening. So let me, let me say goodbye to, let me say goodbye to them. And all right. Yeah. Yeah. You got me. Good. See you later. All right. Area seven. All right. My energy feels as big as the room. Ah. I love this. I feel the energy the same size and strength as before, exactly as spirit number one. But the quality is different. Like if I came upon it the first time, this energy, I would have called it more of like a tree spirit or something like that. So that fascinates me to no end because I know some people think they like kind of hide behind trees, maybe merge with things. And so this thing... I think definitely likes to at least visit Area 7, which is the western area. So that's interesting. And I like that it's next to the mischief guy. So if anyone should be next to the mischief guy, it should be him to keep the mischief guy in check. <laughs> so <laughs> It's funny. I would have thought uh, many of them would have been in the center. So now that I'm coming up the northwest, I'm going to find the actual wisp there. Or is the wisp going to hang out in the center? I hope the wisp is by Sasquatch because don't people often say they see orbs of lights and then they see Sasquatch? So let's see. Area 8, the Northwest. Please. Hmm. How do I even describe this? This area feels portal ish. <laughs> It, it, how do I describe that? How do I? I guess I just tried to. It's a feeling, so let me, let me describe my feelings. Feels like land. And I felt land before. Um, it's, yeah, I feel the energy below me. Oh, that's what I did. I have my eyes closed, but I feel the energy below me. That's how it feels like land. And then how does it feel portal-ish? It feels, it doesn't feel solid in itself. It feels um, like it has a hole in it. It feels like, and the hole isn't just blank. It has like a tingly to the hole. So that's why it feels portal-ish. This area feels portal-ish to me. Um, I'll be curious. I'll be curious if this is, not that I think it's a necessity, but I'll be curious if this is where Tim finds a lot of his skulls because if there is a portal there, I mean, anything if could easily, I imagine if it, if it's a portal, portal would speak to between planes and then that would speak to, it'd be easy to send things through the, the, the mail here, so to speak. All right, now finally to do the center. What's going on in the center of Site 7? Here we go. Area 9.
Hmm. I'd want to stay in the center. Oh, wow. Mm. Wow. I, the energy I'm feeling is so overwhelming. <laughs> it, let, me, let me enjoy it, please, for a minute before I say words that I can't even seem to get out anyway. I, I don't even know how to describe this. It's, it's enormous and energetic strength and size because it goes beyond my room. I don't attribute this to an entity because I asked to be uh, connected to the biggest entity and I was connected to spirit number one. So this is the the crux. I can't, I can't even say this is too new to me. We have to revisit this in part two. Well, we're going to revisit all the sectors in part two. I can't describe this. This is very powerful. It feels balanced. It feels light. It's not making me feel peaceful and calm. It's making me feel very steady and, and just balanced. It's very steady and balanced. I wonder if there's a lot of... You know, I mean, metals come from the earth. I've connected with rocks, trees, the earth. So solid like metal. Like, like that solid. It's weird. I could see this area causing paralysis on some people. Like if you combine this level of energy with fear, I could see it paralyzing you. If that makes any sense. Very wow. All right. Yes, I did notice that I did not come across any true wisps. <laughs> I came across wisp-like things. I came across a character uh, pretending to be a wisp and then just like pranking me a little and. So I imagine if I had to put my working theory together, wisps exist between planes and it seems like number one was still there that I called the Sasquatch. Number two, the in-between spirit and then the wisp. One and two were definitively still there. Number three, I didn't feel the wisp or wisps. So maybe they come in and out more and one and two are more like in between, but at least in this uh, point in time, spending time there. So that's episode one. I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope you're getting what, I, what I'm on about. I like to believe in everything, but I also like to be open to, well, could it be this? Could it be that? Could it be that? Uh, and I'm open to being wrong, but I am definitively open to uh, collaborating, communicating, and putting myself out there for the sake of hopefully learning and growing from these experiences, or learning that I, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not even gonna joke with it. <laughs> I was gonna joke and say, or to learn that you know I'm off my rocker, but I know what I'm experiencing. So, and I have too many validating stories that I, I just don't deny this stuff anymore. I'm not even gonna joke about it. So. I guess I'm going to half joke about it if I leave that in. But that's it for this episode. You can reach me at the Supernatural Explorer on Instagram, or you can shoot me an email at the Supernatural Explorer at gmail.com. Hope you enjoyed the show, everyone. Welcome your feedback, and I look forward to visit number two to site seven and meeting up with my new friends and hopefully catching the trickster before he tricks me this time. All right. Till next time, everyone. Take care. Peace.